You see, he was certainly no dogmatist. Um, and what he laid as a foundation for his whole worldview of anthroposophy. First, we have to understand that anthroposophy is a worldview. It embraces every aspect of the world. Imagine a great tapestry in which every aspect of the world somehow can be represented, threading together and interwoven with every other aspect of the world. Everything is interwoven, interrelated, because it's a living whole. It's like our body, uh, with all its uh, organs, all its systems. How every part is related and linked to every other part. Um, what happens in our toe uh, can be linked, uh, is linked to what happens in our head. Uh, and so the worldview that he created can be seen in that light as a living, as a living whole it embraces everything, and in the center of that is the human being, uh, as a microcosm in this tremendous microcosm, interrelated, interwoven with every aspect of existence. That's what he was trying to develop. But he laid it on the foundation of a theory of knowledge, which, to which he gave the name of the philosophy of spiritual activity. He pointed to our thinking faculty as a spiritual activity. And he meant by that, that we were called upon to develop this thinking faculty to such an extent that we could begin to see the relationship, the interconnections, and the way things metamorphose. Things are not fixed in stone. And he would have been the very, very uh, foremost person to make that very clear. What he gave he gave us a kind of um, a wonderful, sensitive view of a living, of a living uh, world conception. And one has to work with it. We talk about clairvoyant capacities. Well, these have to be developed. Uh, we have been given many qualities uh, in the past. Today, we've reached the point where we can't expect just to receive in some passive way new faculties. We have to create them ourselves. The gods have given us a great deal. And by the way, when I use the term gods, I'm referring to the spiritual hierarchies. They have given us a great deal, but they stand back and let us develop our own freedom, our own inner freedom, which is the, the quintessential of our evolution, to develop inner freedom freedom to become a sovereign, independent spiritual being able to create out of our own grasp, full grasp of the world and its needs. Um, and so we have to evolve what he gave as a kind of very sensitive uh, view of existence. We have to evolve it. Uh, he died in 1925, so that's 80 years ago. And we have to take these wonderful ideas, because they are so alive, that we can live with them and evolve them and see how those can be taken further and metamorphosed on the ground of what he gave. Now, if we just adhere slavishly to what he gave in 1920, um, we're not doing it for justice. And in some cases, we may actually be creating a hindrance. So we're not simply to sit back and just read and then repeat like a parrot what was said. We have to take it further. We have to grow with it, just as a child grows. Only we're growing now in our higher members. 